Hello and welcome to freephotoshop.com and part 3 of my advanced sharpening series looking at how to create an edge mask to use in conjunction with the sharpening tools available here in Photoshop. Now sometimes you're going to be working on images where perhaps you don't need to sharpen the whole thing and a case in point is this image here. This is a photograph taken around about 1980. It was actually taken by my granddad and it shows his Ford console here in the foreground with trees, houses and a blue sky in the background. Now as far as sharpening goes, I can't see any benefit of adding any sharpening at all to the sky whatsoever. And you'll generally find that in photographs with large blocks of colour like the sky in this one, or perhaps a wall on a photograph taken inside a building for example, you're not going to need much sharpening, if any at all. When you've got large blocks of colour, you'll usually find that a subtle change in pixel tones will look much more natural, and all you'll be doing by sharpening the area is bringing out underlying noise from the image. So what we need is a way of sharpening just the bare edges of this image, and we can do that by building ourselves an edge mask and then applying the sharpening to that. Now there's countless ways of building edge masks inside of Photoshop, all you have to do is search the web to see just how many different techniques there are and I'm going to show you a version today that I believe to be one of the best. I'm going to start off by opening up the channels palette and then looking through the free colour channels to find one that has a good amount of contrast. In this case I think I'm going to choose the blue channel here and this is going to be the foundation for creating our edge mask. I'm going to duplicate the channel first of all by dragging it down to the new layer icon and then I'm going to rename it Edge Mask and we just need to ensure we've got our new channel selected. Now I'm going to go up to the filters menu and select Stylize and then choose the Find Edges filter. Next we're going to invert the layer so we've got the white edges on a black background and we're going to do that by going up to our image menu and selecting adjustments and then choosing invert. And this has given us the correct structure for a mask inside of Photoshop. Next we're going to go back up to our filters menu and select other and then select maximum. And what this allows us to do is expand the size of the white areas inside our mask by the amount of pixels we're entering here in this little dialog box. I'm going to enter an amount value of 15 pixels and click OK. Now you can see that we've increased our white edges but they're now looking like a series of squares. To fix that we're going to go up to our filters menu once again and this time select our noise sub menu and then choose medium. Once again we're going to need to enter a value in pixels to smooth out the squares we created by using the maximum command. And if you're a little unsure about what to enter here then just enter the same amount as you entered in the maximum dialog box. So I'm going to enter a value of 15 pixels and then hit OK. Now we want to apply a little feathering to our edge mask so that when we apply the sharpening we're not just going to be adding it in harsh straight lines, we're actually going to be adding it into a smooth selection outline which will help to create a transitional effect between the sharpened areas and the unsharpened areas. So we're going to do that by going up once again to our filters menu and selecting blur and then selecting Gaussian blur. Once again I'm going to enter an amount of 15 pixels to stay in line with what we've added so far and then click OK. OK so we've now created our edge mask and I'm going to switch back to our composite RGB view and simply load the mask we've created as a selection outline and we can do that by either going up to the select menu and choosing load selection or if I come out of that by holding down the control key on the keyboard and selecting the mask over here in the channels palette. Now you can see that our mask has included several areas in the grass here and several areas in the sky that we actually don't want to include in our sharpening mask. So I'm going to go ahead and select the lasso tool 
and then just ensure that I've got it set to subtract from selection by clicking this icon here and then tracing around the areas in the grass and areas in the sky I want to remove from the edge mask and that looks just about right okay now before we apply the sharpening we can go up here to the view menu and uncheck the extras option and that's going to hide the selection outline it's not a necessary step but it's going to help us view the sharpening without any distractions when we apply it once we've done that we're ready to apply our sharpening so we'll go up to the filter menu one last time and select sharpen and then select the unsharp mask I'm gonna move the preview window so I can see the front of the car here just so I can keep an eye on one of the most important parts of the image and remember I can also see what's happening in the main window once we got that right I'm going to select an amount value of 250 percent a radius value of 4 pixels and then a threshold of one level I'm gonna click OK to accept the changes now we've successfully sharpened the areas of the image that needed the most attention and left other areas such as the sky looking as they did when we opened the image in the first place and that's all thanks to the edge mask we created by combining a few of Photoshop's filters now just to finish things off I'm gonna go up here to the edit menu and select fade unsharp mask and inside the fade dialog box I'm going to change the blending mode to luminosity and then fade the filter down to about 90% I'm going to click OK and we now have a perfectly sharpened image achieved by sharpening the right areas with the best amount values you'll find that working with an edge mask really kicks into gear when working with nature or landscape photography and also portraits where you'll want to sharpen a subject's features but not the skin tones well I hope you found this tutorial on freephotoshop.com to be helpful thanks very much for watching